happen like that. Oh, ahoy there, me mateys. Yes, me and me pirates are back from Booty Island. And we have plundered all kinds of booty. Uh, no, no casualties, of course. Not even a chicken. Can you believe that? However, we have found an extraordinary treasure. Extraordinary. There. The Pirates of Confusion. Emblem. Hi, this is Vito Lamanna, also known as Captain Lebac, the most feared pirate on the seven seas. I'm happy to announce that the Emblem Masterclass has been finally unleashed. And I need to tell you, my friend, that I had a lot of fun. This is Vito Lamanna, and I hope you will enjoy this masterclass. Yar! Okay, before we get cracking, let me tell you this. This is a free episode. Hey, let's get your rum and celebrate. Hey, yeah, but there will also be an extended version which will be Patreon exclusive, yes, only for pirates. In that extended version, I'm gonna show you how to create some serious damage. As a patron of Confusion, you will also get all the project files and all the tutorials to date. Another rum bottle, please. Also, you will get all the footage that I shot, such as steam footage, lens flares, snow. And as always, you can use it and do whatever you want with it without any restrictions. Just like a real pirate. Let me just put that away here for a moment. I know your fingers are already twitching, so let me just quickly explain to you what we got laid out here in this comp that you hopefully downloaded so you can sail along with me. Okay, so let me just go through it. Okay, here on the left, we have a rusty texture. Now, of course, you can use any texture you fancy, uh, any grunge texture or yeah. So what I did here is I prepared them for my uh, project. So first gamut because we're working in linear space. So here I activate a lookup table and uh, then just the brightness contours, blah, blah, blah. And I feed it into a set domain node, which is then again fed into a wireless node. Let me bring the inspector. It's called now inspector. Inspector Gadget. And the next one would be a footage, the drone footage uh, animated. And here the same gamut. And then I did a color correction. I made it darker because this is going to be used for the reflections. You know, it's not a chrome look. So I just, I didn't want to have a strong reflection. And then I did a resize. And the resize is just to resize it to the project settings. Yeah. And again, set the main wireless node. And lastly, of course, the title or your emblem. The text by default has an alpha, so I feed it into a background so I can feed the background into the set domain and then into a wireless node. Now this is additional, you could hook this also directly into the set domain. And here on the most right, we have the wavy bump. Now this is like the signature um, detail of this project. Uh, I won't open this just yet, that's just a little surprise for you later. And finally, down here we have the footage that I'm using, which I explained before, you will get it as a patron of Confusion or a pirate of Confusion. <laughs> That's POC. Yeah. POC, POC, POC. So here we got the steam footage. Mm, beautiful. Shot on an Urza Mini 4.6. Done some lens flare elements or not really lens flare, but this kind of footage is quite effective for titles. And some snow, you know, what I'm doing here. Vito, late in the night. And of course, there will be more and more. There will be also a procedural metal texture, which I created with my fellow pirate, Emilio. Another Italian fellow, by the way. Uh, it's it's going to be a cool macro that allows you to do some, some metal awareness thing. And 
you know, fully procedural. And I hope to create more of these uh, procedural textures that you can use for your titles. Okay, I will make another video on that texture. So let's get started here. So first I'm going to go and create the parts of the text and then I'll go back and explain to you in detail. I grab my node here of the text. I bring it down here. Let's display this. Okay. And then I use a create bump. Oh, that was the concrete. <laughs> I create bump map. Okay. Bring this over here. I put the scale, height scale to 100%. And I set this to float 32 and leave the rest. And then in between here comes the magic, the erode tool. Now I'll put this on the right. And uh, yeah, the, here I want to use the Gaussian. But I will explain later what the other modes do. And I bring this down to 0 0.04. Yeah, and look how beautiful this looks. Now, additionally, I can use the very same text as a mask here and bang. Now, what we call normal maps in other 3D applications, in Fusion, we refer to it as bump map. On the other hand, bump map is referred to as height map. Essentially the very same thing. So this is our first stream. This has no details. We will add details later. So now I create a Boolean and a shader. Or maybe another shader. Bang. And now I feed the freshly created bump into the channel boolean bring this over here and so what i do now is i hop over to the auxiliary channels i enable them and then in the x y z normals i would choose red green blue red green blue just double check because sometimes uh, weird fella swoops in there and now what i'm doing just to show you later something i open up the versions and I choose version 2. I, I create a new version 2. And here I'm going to set this to black. You know, this choosing those options in here used to be very quick with Fusion 6.4. You would just click in here. It wouldn't open up a drop down, I think. And you just press B and it just switches it to black. And Okay, so now that we have put the RGB of this image into the normal channels, we can utilize the shader. Bang! And look what we can do now. Now this is going to be cheesy, but it will do the trick. So I want to have a light from the top. That means you put the polar height up here, and then I go and I do something like this. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe like this. Now setting this the shader is a little bit yeah, it's a little bit dodgy. It, it takes a lot of fiddling around. So the result, because I don't want to waste a lot of time finding the exact settings that I had before. So I would just go and... Where, where are you going, Captain? You know, yeah. So maybe something like this. That's not too shabby. So now we got two elements. This one from the top and this one from the bottom left. Now I'm going to grab my texture here. Got to make a big decision where you put those fellas, you know, so that you don't create Spider-Man action. So this is the texture and I want to sort of either overlay or multiply this on top. So maybe let's try to multiply and reduce the gain. So I don't worry about the alpha because we're going to cut this away anyway. But usually you want to avoid messing with your alpha. And I do the same with this pass here. And just to make this a little bit more beautiful, we add color already. And this one as well. This can be more blue just to separate the lights, something like this. And now, now what? we got those two elements. And of course, we need one more element, which is the, the reflection element. So I copy the background. Let's put it on the left, maybe. This is how it looks. Enable the lookup table, which for some reason is off. This is unbelievable. And what I do now is I use a displace. That is a very cool trick. And I feed it with the create bump map. So, and now if I switch to the XY, put this up. Fusion 9 had this button here that allowed you to uh, tweak the 
the brightness of the viewport. The good stuff was taken away from us. So now I'm going to tweak this uh, until I find something interesting. Now, usually you want to normalize the, the bump map by using a brightness contrast in between there, but we don't need this for here. And again, now we need to make a big decision here. Yeah, a lot of big decisions. How much do you want to blur the reflections? So you can see here. Well, actually, you cannot see it. So let me just pop in a brightness contrast for you. I would just bring up the gamma. And OK, so you see, this also creates a very nice, interesting look. Now I could make the first blur like this here and then create another blur. And this time I make it stronger, but I reduce the blend so that the first result of the, the result of the first blur would show through something like this. And this gives a little bit more quality. OK, yeah, quality. OK, so now we got three elements. We got the reflections, we got the first shader and we got the next shader here. Ignore this junk out there. We don't need us. Sometimes we get some artifacts there. We can fix those. So now let me go quickly back and explain to you what I did here. So the first thing, the title. Erode, dilate. What does it mean? So erode is actually when you erode something inwards. OK, so and if you do it the other way around, this is actually called dilate just just to make that clear. OK, so I said this back. Now we, we have these modes in here and by default we have box. This one is not really useful for motion graphics because it just changes your uh, text shape or your original design of the shape. So if you want to preserve the original shapes, you rather choose the circle. Now the circle tries to keep the shape, although it dilates it in a in a circular fashion. But the overall shape is preserved. However, the performance is a little bit slower than the other ones. The ones we are after for this creative titles is the linear and the Gaussian. Yeah, Gaussian. I used to say Gaussian. I don't know. I thought it was French, but. Gaussian or Gaussian. So the linear gives you almost the same result as the Gaussian. But I find that it works better with curved shapes. As you can see here, it creates these rectangular things here, you know, and you really don't want them. So if you switch this to Gaussian, you will get a much nicer look. Now, the erode delay tool is an essential tool when it comes to keying, where you want to fix some edge issues or spelling issues. You can find the erode in the delta key here, for example, if you go over to this uh, pre met tab, you can see there's also an erode slider. And over here, there's also an erode dilate. There's also one in the clean plate. You can also find the erode option. Okay, So just a side note. Next, uh, create bump. With a create bump, there is not really much to say. You just crank this up to 100. Now, I want to mention that this comp is set to 16 bit flow per channel. Now, the cool thing about Fusion is that anywhere in your comp, you can go in and switch to a different bit depth. OK, that's something you cannot do in After Effects with, you know, with the flat lenders, I call them the land lovers. Yeah, there you set your composition to 32 bit float and then half of the tools won't work. Half of your cannons won't fire. Here we have a, a stream. It's almost like a timeline. So you just go in there, you say, OK, from here on, I want to use it in 16 bit or even 8 bit if you are like retro. Yeah. Um, so that's a cool thing. Now, with normal maps or bump maps, position pass, warp, uh, all those technical passes for high precision, you need flow 32. With this normal map, you still have some artifacts. These are not from the, the bit depth, though. But sometimes you you get artifacts if you use floating, uh, float floating, <laughs> uh, floating ships. I think you better set this to float thirty two and you're good to go. Now to fix those issues that you see here, those those streaks, uh, I think they come from the anti aliasing. Uh, so to fix those, you know, if you blur this here a little bit, they're gone. 
The problem is, yeah, you lose the edges here a little bit, the sharp edges, but maybe you can make a big decision again here. How far do you want to go? Maybe like this, and maybe that's that's still fine. Okay. Now here, the channel boolean. Remember when I set the RGB to black. Now, why did I do that? The reason why I did that is because, for example, here in the shader, I could now hook in a mask and restrict the lighting to the mask. Now I want you to watch what happens if I go back to the channel boolean and I switch it to preset one or version one, it's called now. You see that the normal map or the bump map starts to shine through. Okay, that, that's something we don't want. So you just eliminate the RGB channels or values and you get something like this. And I will keep the ellipse mask already. Uh, actually, not in here. Here, I will use it as it is. But in this one, I will use the ellipse mask and I will restrict the bottom light to the bottom area, something like this. Displace. So the displace has two types of displace modes, which you've seen already, the radial and the XY. Now, the radial also kind of gives you an interesting result here. The problem is that it displaces from a center point and this might be very useful for other situations, other effects that you want to achieve. Uh, I'm using it all, actually quite a lot. But for this effect, maybe it's, yeah, maybe it's not what we want. I mean, you could use the, you know, you can move the center point and see those, the slight parallax effect we have here. It almost looks like the camera is moving in that world. So it can be it can be very useful, but the cool thing about the X Y mode is that you can use color information from the red and green channel, or even blue if you want. If you fancy that, if you like blue, if you like being blue, and then you can do this kind of stuff. Now you can go a little bit higher here, maybe, so that we hit this edge here with the reflection. And then there's also the spread function, which also allows you for cool effects. Look at this. Now, the nice thing is here how it sort of blends these edges here into the background or the background into the edges of the text. This is already a different design for an, an emblem. Uh, you might want to use that maybe just slightly to get the edge here. The problem is now if you would have micro details, they will be squeezed uh, by this spread. But look at this, how nice this looks. Okay, so what we're gonna do next? I'm gonna actually add our passes now. Oh, you know what? Let's actually do something else. I continue with the very blur. Now, I don't wanna make chrome. The reflection of this text is very subtle. It's almost, yeah maybe you can just feel it when it's animated. So to make it more like a rough surface, I will use the rusty texture and I will derive from the luminance. And then I use this, this mask. I will use it in the very blur, but not in the mask slot, but in the green one. Okay. And if we use this now, nothing happens. If I crank this up, you can see something starts to shine through make the mask a little bit tight and we will already start getting a very cool surface effect here. Now it's all up to you how much, how far do you want to go. Now with the very blur, you can go actually really strong here. You could maybe try 30. Look at that. Beautiful. Okay. So now let's do the next trick. I drop in a filter and I will go in from the bump. Let's, where do we bring this now? Let's bring this. I don't like crossing, but you know, I don't want to waste too much time now to tidying this up. So I feed the normal map or bump map. I say normal because it just looks like a normal map. In Fusion, it's called bump map. So forgive me that. And I would change the filter type mode to Sobel. And what that does, it because of the normal map, because of the very nice color separation we have here, it will do a very nice job on edge detection. And if I use a mask now, not into the filter, from the filter into a mask, and I set it to luminance, and then... Yo, Captain, I think you accidentally chose saturation. Yeah, that sometimes happens. Okay, so now you can see we can get this nice edge detection here. And you see that how this fades away here. This, this is what makes it so cool okay now of course we don't want the border edge so to get that away we simply use another mask and this mask i multiply on top of this one and now you can see it's it's not enough it doesn't cover the edges so here again erode dilate 
Uh, but this time we leave it a box, okay? This is another usage for the erode delayed. And now watch what happens if I erode this a little bit. Bang, we keep the edges only. So now after the very blur, I will drop in a brightness contrast. I will feed that with our newly created mask. And now I'll bring up the gain. Now check this out. This effect has been selling titles since 1994. <laughs> 1994. You want to use that. Okay. Mm. Now we can make a big decision here, for example, because now it looks very u uniform. Okay. What we could do is we could bring that brightness contrast actually here and apply the edge effect before the very blur. Now we use the very blur and that will only affect portions of the edge, which makes it look even more worn. Now we don't want to cover it completely. So what I will do is I bring the blend down just ever so slightly, you know, just so it peeks through like that. And then I use the very same brightness contrast here and I paste it again after the very blur. I hook this in here and bang. Now we can reduce the intensity here a little bit and you can see that we get this very nice natural look here. And this will start to shine once we use the uh, Fast Expo Glow. Side note here, again, this is a macro that my friend Emilio did. And this is a very nice exponential glow. It's very fast. And now we increase the gain. I might have his old version here. And now you can see how it starts to shine a little bit in a random fashion. This makes it look like really powerful. Very beautiful. So I, I like to make the glow a little bit bluish. This gives it a little bit more cold metalish look. Yep, people want to know my thoughts. Here are my thoughts right there on the plate hey, for you to digest. And again, let me save. Oh yeah, this looks already pretty good. I mean, you could use it as it is, as a metal text. But of course, the gods have spoken, commanding us to bring this further. The next thing I do is I will combine it with the light, the shader passes here. So I drop in a boolean and I will probably do this after the fast glow. These are the big decisions you have to make, you know, it's, I mean, sometimes you don't have to be technically correct. Sometimes you just have to try things. So now you can see we get this very nice lighting combined with the reflection. And I would do the same with the other one and bang. bang, bang. That's can be a little bit more blue as I see here. It looked more bluish before because I didn't have the lookup table activated. So it had a different gamma. So it was something like this maybe. Make it really cold. Okay. You want to have some contrast in there. Lookup table is on and here it's on. So this is looking pretty good now with the very blur i can use the very same mask that goes in here i mean this is not a mask but it has the alpha information and therefore you can use it as a mask so i will just hook this right into the very blur which will restrict it to the text only and this is actually already enough to send it to the wide world um it has this very nice color variations in there the reflections the the grunge the damaging effect not the damage the worn effect slightly so now I use a boolean and here again, very same thing. I just bring the mask down here, hook it into the boolean. And now I'm going to say clear, hop over here and do apply mask inverted. Now I could use a mask in between here, but I always say, try to not blow your flow. Try to use as many nodes as needed and as few as possible. Okay. That keeps your flow like very neat. Except with the rum. There you can never have enough. I, I strongly agree on that one. And here you go. A very beautiful beveled text, pristine quality. Let's just go back for a moment. Um, so with the filter, there's not much to say. I mean, I use the Sobel quite a lot. There's the lap, lap, I don't know how to pronounce it. I could have researched it, but you know, okay, here it goes. I, I'm going to say, it, okay, <laughs> Laplacian. I don't know. This is actually also used to create a sharpen effect. If you would apply this to your to your original image, it would look sharper. And it's sometimes you can use this one. It gives a little finer edges, but I leave it up to you. And it also contains noise and grain, uh, the focus, which I never used. 
uh, embos are used sometimes, embos over. So the very blur is one of my favorite tools. It's very powerful. It has different modes in here, multi-box, soft and defocus. Now defocus creates a very nice one-way depth of field. I don't know how to explain that, um, but you've probably seen it in other tutorials. So if I would create a very blur, so I feed my very blur into the other very blur, and I'm gonna use an ellipse mask, for example. Now let's say we wanna create some, some depth of field effect. Okay, some very, it, it's, it's, I wouldn't say cheesy, it's actually look, looking pretty good. Yep, not the mask, the green one. Yeah, sometimes I just, you know, it's late here. My baby woke me up and I thought, you know what, Vito, just record that video. Got nothing better to do at three o'clock in the morning. Yeah, but you see what I mean. Now, if you would have very high values, for example, here, those values, is actually a cool trick that I want to show you. Now, if you would apply the very blur with the defocus effect and you would blur it where you have your highlights and those highlights look dull, then it means that those values are probably a little bit too low or you are not in 16-bit flow. Sometimes this helps to find some uh, issues. For example, uh, let me try to bring this higher. You see now they start popping a little bit more. See, that starts to look much nicer now. Now, of course, it depends what you want. If you want to use a depth of field, then this might be what you want to, uh, what you are after, you know. But you know, maybe, yeah, maybe it could be too strong for showing it without a depth of field. But with a depth of field, definitely uh, very bright highlights. They just do the magic. I mean, those bouquet effects. Those are the effects that have been selling titles since 1994. Yeah. See, very beautiful. But again, this is just a, a way to fake depth of field. Uh, we're just gonna throw this away for now. And first Expo Glow, there is not really much to say. This Glow 1994. Let's move on. So now that we have created this text here, actually, let me just do one more trick here. Uh, if we would go back to the very blur, you can see that if I deactivate this, the very blur creates this nice worn effect, but it doesn't know anything about light and shadows. So we need to help it out a little bit. Now, what you can do is to fix that is taking uh, one of the shader, for example, this one. So I just make another copy so that I can use it without a mask. And now I'm gonna use this to create a luminance mask. And I will do something like this. Okay, beautiful. Let me just move this over here. After the very blur, I will use a brightness contrast with this mask, and I will just drop this a little bit. Now here, we actually don't have uh, the shadows, so we need to invert this, perhaps. You can make this darker there, you know, something like this, Mary. This is already, this. This also has something here, you know. Look, it, the text gets a little bit more volume here. Okay, something like this perhaps. Ah, that's, that's really nice. Let me save and bang. That's beautiful. So now let's get to the real hot stuff. Our signature bump, the wavy bump. The wavy bump looks like this. Now, Fusion has only one noise creator or generator, which is the fast noise. The fast noise, at first sight, it looks like a very primitive tool. It lets you create this noise and it has the discontinuous mode, which is very nice. And you can invert it, create some sort of lava effect. But that's about it. I mean, you can play with the contrast to create something like this, but the noise type is still the same. You have these two types. So one might think there's so many noise types out there, you know, why does Fusion only have this noise? It certainly would be nice to have all those different noise types, whirly and, and, and you know all those noises. But the thing is, in Fusion, it's all up to you. I mean, we literally have something like Substance Designer here. You can tweak those things and tailor them if you know the tools. And from this noise, you can create this noise. Now, let me give you a quick example as a bonus here. 
So I'm going to take this noise and make sure that it has an alpha. And I will copy this noise and now I will bring them together, but I would invert one of them. Now we have something like this. Now check out what happens if I use the scale. We start to get a 3D-ish look. Now we could make the noise a little bit more interesting, you know, like this continues, this continues, you know. For example, you want to create a texture for a planet or something. Now it's all really up to you what you do. There's so many things you can try out. Now this could be a texture. Another powerful feature of the noise is one of my favorite is if you go over and you set the type to gradient and then you can use the offset to sort of let the noise grow. This is very powerful if you want to use it as a disintegration effect and you can set it for example to repeat and then you get something like this. You can do some fancy effects like this, you know, and this could be a base texture to make some damaged concrete or something, a damaged wall or something, you know. But if you go in here and create the same values on, on the left and right, you can make it seamless. So now you can create more something like a lava effect. But how in the name of Blackbeard did I create this wavy look? It's almost like a hairy look. It's actually super simple. Okay, let me just recreate this. It won't be exactly the same again. So the first thing I do is I create a noise, something like that. Maybe I do something like this. I angle it. Did I use, uh, maybe this continues, make it slightly angled. And then I use another noise. This time I don't make it angled, maybe something like this. Oh, all kinds of things you can do. And now comes the trick. I bring in a plasma and a displace. Again, displace. What, where is, ah, the S was missing. Ah, those fat fingers. <laughs> So what I do now is, uh, first I use this noise, put it into the yellow of the displace and I feed the displace again set to XY. And now look at the plasma. So the plasma has these wonderful colors, very intense red, blue colors. I mean, you check the channels, red, green, blue, and these are beautifully useful for the displace. Now watch what happens if I do this. Ah, now you already know. Told you the trick, now you know it. Now you can go out there and get some gold. Now if you get this space up there, just try to move it. But the thing with the plasma is you need to rearrange things to make, to give it a different quality, you know. So maybe deactivate one. You, you see how this starts to get this curly look here. There you go. And then maybe merge these together but not so strong just to add some slight variation this is it probably this alone is probably already enough for our for the effect we are after you could also try to use another plasma another displace but this time we slightly shift the face and maybe bring down the blend to create some sort of micro details that are not exactly like the previous result but slightly offset and not completely different if it's completely different then it would just maybe you would see this ghosting effect that's not what you want but if you make it a slight difference a slight offset it kind of still looks natural so there you go this is our signature of wavy bump bang now i copy this one the existing one actually i almost like this better oh what the heck let's just now look at the wireless advantage so this is the second wavy bump okay let's name this wavy 2 now i will just hook this into the wireless and now i bring this back here and i want to combine this with our blade text so i drop this in here and then i will merge this on top but of course we need to create a bump at first <laughs> and this can be a little bit subtle, maybe something like that. And normal maps or the bump maps are always overlaid to combine them, something like this. Now, one thing here is I want to use, utilize the whole resolution. So I will just scale the merge size down so that we get more details. If you check this out, you can get finer details. So now you need to be careful because now that we have all those details in there, if I would go to our filter 
you will get something like this. Now, you don't want that. Here, we only want the main edges of the text. So we need to replace this router here. Uh, we don't replace the router, but replace the input, the incoming footage with the original bump. And we're good to go. This is all back to normal. And now let's take a look at the shader, which should be look Looking a little bit more interesting now. This could be a little bit too strong, so you can always dial this down, something like this. Let's take a look at the other one. Oh, that was the other one. <laughs> that is maybe still a little bit too strong. Oh, it's your world, like Bob Ross liked to say. And in your world, me friend, you can do whatever you fancy to do. Yeah, that's what the pirate said. Oh, this looks about right and merged with the grunge maybe bring this a little bit that's a little bit fine tweaking now this, this is where where you gotta tailor it to your liking Ooh, a look at that perhaps what i was saying before you can see that our wavy details are really blurred now that's because of the spread now this is unfortunate because i really like those details here around the edges but I want to keep those details very sharp here, you know. So if I bring this down, look, this thing, yeah, it's beautiful. You can maybe just slightly, see, now we have the good of both worlds. Nah, uh, <laughs> now this is looking pretty good. Now let's continue with our footage. So I have the steam footage here. So I'm going to put the steam footage First, I'm going to put it behind. And then I put the very same on top. This time, say screen. And then move to the lens flare, alpha gain. Now, the lens flare is animated, if I may show. And the probably the most interesting part is here. So this is where I matched my animation to. I mean, you can also match the timing of this footage to, the, to your text animation, but Let's just talk about it. You know, we just need to talk about things. You know, there's nothing we can talk about. Now you can see here, for example, here when it becomes really bright, you could make it come in like, you know, like whoosh. And then you let it brighten up. This just gives it this nice title effect that has been selling titles since 1994. So here with the snow, I just put up the alpha again. I add a brightness contrast here and I just increase this, make this a little pop a little bit more, reduce the saturation as this looks to be a little bit too saturated. So this is now pretty cool. It looks a little bit bleached out because of all the footage that we slapped on. But you can always bring in contrast. You know, for example, I can use a gray node. You could uh, use the multiply, do something like this. And what I like to do is I, I also like to use the film convert. For example, I apply a gamut deactivated lookup table so we need to bring this back to as rgb which makes it brighter again and then you could use a curve tool to bring back the contrast or something like that i like to use the film convert sometimes and then i can go in here and use the black point bring the highs a little bit like that you know sometimes you can use a temperature you can do the very same with a curve tool so now just to do some additional stuff. I will add an additional element. So I will create two bitmap masks. I just need the alpha, an output with an alpha. So this didn't have an alpha. So perhaps where we cut out the image. But again, it would be so easy with the show alpha button. Now it has to be the check underlay. So it's about here. Now what we can do is a very cool trick to create a rim light. So it's usually it's a, uh, like a light wrap. I invert one mask, multiply it on the other, and then I'm gonna bring the first mask a little bit down, something like this, which will sort of give you the impression of a rim light coming up there. And now I'm gonna create a noise. Again, a noise, but th this time for a different purpose. Uh, details up, let me just see the noise alone. Contrast up something like this, and I will increase the CV rate. This makes it animated, okay? Just to see how it looks, something like this. 
something like this. Now I feed it with the mask and this will give us the rim light, which will have uh, some animation to it and makes it therefore a little bit more natural, if I may say. And again, here I'm going to adjust the color a little bit. I'm going to crank this up to three and maybe a slight increase in the green. And now if we add an Expo Glow, we should be getting a nice bluish effect. Now, there we go. You can go in here, crank this up to seven. Ooh, yep, 1994. I can't stress this enough. <laughs> and what we do now is we just, this was an ad, I just copy this boolean down here and nope. Put this on top. Something is becoming really slow here. I don't know why. I had it on play, that's why. Ah, yeah, here we got the black fellas. These are black values. Scallywags just sometimes show off, you know, hey, I'm so black, I'm so black. <laughs> so the question is, where do they happen now? It's actually easy to find out uh, by using, pressing V, you can get this window here and you set it to the 3D histogram. And you can see the, the black fellas, Scallywags, they are down here. Now these are still no minus, so they're okay. So let's just see where. So the problem occurs with our fast noise. If you increase the noise contrast here, then you will get introduced black or scallywags. So all you do is just bring a brightness contrast, clip black, throw them overboard, and go back to the final result. So now I would have to tweak this here because, you know, it doesn't look exactly like the, the text from the demo which is this one here, you know. So for example, here you can see that the top is actually, I actually did use an ellipse on this one. I, tr I wanted to try this, but I failed, you know, I failed really bad. So I'm just gonna go back and gonna restrict the top light to the top. This should bring the blue back and it did. So yeah. Now what I like about this is actually that we have the contrast between the dark text and the so where the text is dark, the background is bright. Where the text is bright, the, the background is darker. So this is a very nice contrast that I, I always like to use. I can see that the texture I used was more subtle. So we could dial this back a little bit. I decided I won't try to recreate exactly the same uh, result because it's just too time consuming. And, you know, I would have to memorize all those values and it's just madness, you know? I mean, I would lose my sanity, you know? I, I thought I can provide the comp and I can just explain the tools, the methods that I used, and then the rest is just matching the values. I know it's, it's, not, it's not like uh, a different process or something. So if I bring down the curve, you can see that the highlights start to pop more. Yeah, it's still pretty good. And I want to show you one more trick, what you can do with the, with the bump here. So after the erode, you can utilize the curve tool. Now, that's a very cool trick. And go to the spline. I choose show selected only. I select the red, green, blue channel. And now what we can do is basically, you can think of this curve sort of like the curve to this height information. And um, what I can do now is I can go in here and I can change my height map. So you can see we start getting some details in here. And this is pretty cool because now you can you can tailor your your bevel in a very cool way. I mean, look at this. And it's all 2D, that's the cool thing. I wanna keep this at zero. Actually, I liked it softer. And then another cool trick, for example, I bring in a chroma key in here and now I'm going to pick those bright areas here. It works better if we don't have so much details in here, but you will get the picture. So after the shader, I use a brightness contrast and I'm going to use the key that I just made, invert it, and now I can slightly bring up the brightness here to increase the effect of the headlight.
And lastly, I add a sharpen effect and put this to my usual 0 0.5, 0 0.5. There you go. We have a title here that has been selling games since 1994, okay? So you go ahead and you create your own title or emblem. Now stay tuned for the extended version on Patreon where we'll be creating some serious damage. My dear fellow swashbucklers, it is time for me to let you go as I have to embark on my new journey. But before I do so, I wanted to answer a question that some of you might have. Such as, how did I come up with those designs? Now, usually when people ask me that, or if they sent me their work for review, I would answer one simple question. What's the story? Now, obviously, a text or title doesn't have a story, does it? But perhaps someday you have to create a title for a movie. Well, then it's already decided, right? Let's say you want to create titles just for the fun of it. Now, in this particular case, if we look at it, I looked at the font while sipping on my rum and I said that the font looks very bold, it looks heavy and it has those dangerous tips down there. And I thought, I like contrast, why don't I do the opposite of those things? So I decided to make the surface light, I decided to make it curvy and to make it fine detailed and this is basically how I came up with the blade design this is Vito Lamanna thank you for watching I'll see you next time until then enjoy what you're doing hey.